world of stream bugs. Stream bugs are the insects that live in our streams and rivers. A healthy stream is a living stream. It supports life in and around itself, not only fish, plants, and birds, but insects, an important part of the food chain. Like us, insects need certain requirements to live, like cool, clean water, plenty of oxygen, and things to eat. Kato Lachlan is a scientist. She knows that by carefully watching nature, we can understand what is going on around us. They call her the bug lady. Our Girl Scout troop got to spend a whole day with her, and it was great. She taught us about kick nets and stream surveys, and how to look for bugs in the water that can tell us if streams are healthy. We're going to go down to Blackjack Creek today and look at some of the things that live in the creek. We're going to look at some things that you might not have seen before that are um, pretty important to all life in the creek. These insects we're going to look at today have kind of a dual existence. Part of the time, they spend their lives in the water, uh, on the bottom as um, immature stages like caterpillars. But they don't live in water as adults. They have to emerge from the water, and then they become adults. We have some devices we can use to look at, catch these organisms, and some other devices where we can look at them. And I'd also like to um, show you how to identify these organisms and um, determine how healthy the creek is based on what kind and how many organisms there are there. Um, you might not know that you can go down there with this net, collect a few of these organisms, figure out what they are real quickly, kind of give them a rough count, and you can, you can figure out if your stream is healthy or it's not very healthy in just a few minutes. So I'm going to show you how to do this. There are certain things to remember when you visit a stream. First, always get permission from the landowner before you go. Always go with a buddy or group to help you watch out for each other. A stream is a fragile system. Try to disturb the banks as little as possible so as not to add to the sediment in the stream. Find out as much as you can about the stream by looking carefully and perhaps drawing a map. Look at the streamside vegetation, called the riparian zone. This vegetation prevents soil from entering the stream and can filter out some pollutants. It can help shade the water and keep it cool for the creatures living there. Streamside plants also provide food for stream insects. Look at what is on the bottom, whether it's mud or rocks or gravel. If there is too much silt or sediment, insects can't live there and fish can't spawn. And you'll want to notice what kind of birds and other animals live in or near the stream. Finally, look for signs of pollution in the stream, like oil on the water, bad smells, or animals whose manure can pollute the stream. Different insects like different areas of the stream, called habitats, to live in. One of these is quiet pools. Another is a leaf pack along the edge of the stream. One of their favorite habitats is a riffle, an area with rocks or cobbles and fast moving water. Here we are at Blackjack Creek. We're gonna look at some things that live on the bottom of the stream that don't have any backbones and they're called macroinvertebrates. Because we can actually take a look at what lives on the stream bottom, like they're not moving very fast like fish are, and we can collect them and we can look at the types that are there and how many are there, and we can get an idea of our, of our stream system, if Blackjack Creek is healthy or not. Think about butterflies and think about moths. Uh, butterflies and moths start out as eggs, and then they turn into really beautiful caterpillars such as this one. And then a little bit later in their lives, they roll up and they form cocoons, don't they? And what do the cocoons turn into? What crawls? Butterflies. Butterflies, yeah. Well, just imagine if the caterpillar and the cocoon, instead of living on a leaf on land, lived in the water. Look at this. This is kind of a watery caterpillar. All righty. So it's not nearly as fancy as that guy, but it's really similar and it'll form a cocoon, and out will come, instead of a butterfly or a moth, 
something called a crane fly. And if you all know crane flies, they look like gigantic mosquitoes. And they spend the egg, the caterpillar, and the cocoon stage in the water, and then they emerge as adults. And they find another of the same species, and they mate, and they put their eggs back in the water, and the whole life cycle starts again. So insects play a pretty big role in stream systems in that they eat the smaller things and they in turn are eaten by the bigger things. If you don't have a lot of aquatic organisms like aquatic insects, you don't have a, a good fish population or a good bird population or anything like that. Just stopping and looking at a piece of wood or a rock and you'll find lots of different aquatic organisms on these things. But one very special place where aquatic organisms like to live are in places such as riffles. A riffle is a shallow area in a stream, and it has fast-moving water, and it has lots of rocks in it, like those cobbles that break the surface of the water. And insects and other organisms like that area so much is because the water is very cold and fast-moving there, and there's lots of oxygen. This is a net that's very simple to make, and this is window screen, and these are basic wood dowels that you can get at your hardware store, and these are staples. So the I made net that Kate right showed us was called a kick net. Sure we were going to learn how to do a kick net survey for stream insect collection, which is a kind of stream monitoring. A kick net survey is a quick and easy way to test the health of a stream. You'll need a white bucket, a kick net, a white pan, forceps or tweezers, a hand lens for magnification, and some ice cube trays. The equipment is inexpensive. Now, if we want to go out and collect some insects, we have to be kind of careful, I think, because there's some other things that live in the stream, too. And if we get out in this area, chances are we might be disturbing some other organisms, organisms that live there. There's some salmon that live in this stream. And many of the invertebrate organisms that live in this stream make up the food for these small salmon. And these little coho salmon actually live in the stream for about a year after they um, emerge from the gravel. So this is going to comprise a lot of their diet. And we want to be really careful that we don't disturb them. There's a special way to go about collecting bugs with a kick net. It's important to follow all the steps. We're going to plant it kind of at an angle here. And just so the bugs don't get out the bottom of the net, we're going to put a couple of big rocks right at the bottom of the net. First, you choose an area about one meter square in a riffle. Next, you put some big rocks in the bottom of the net so the insects can't get under it. <coughs> then you pick up the big rocks in the collection area and scrub them off, putting all the insects you find into a tray. And you want to rub all the bugs off into a pan. Now you're ready to do a stream dance. Okay, we've washed all our rocks. Now we're ready for a couple of good stream dancers. Step right up, stream dancers. Okay, hold the net carefully. Make sure it kind of goes backwards like this. And you want to get in front of the net in an area about the same size as the net. And you want to really wriggle your feet and your toes around and dance towards the front of the net when our music starts. May we have some music, please? With a little green frog one day, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and with a little green frog, mm -hmm. and with a little green frog one day, and his eyes went blink, blink, blink. Oh. And with a little green frog one day, mm -hmm. and with a little green frog, mm -hmm. and with a little green frog one day, and his eyes went blink, blink, blink. Uh, the next step, step after we have sung and danced, we pick the rocks out of the net. Pick out all those big rocks that we collected and put on the bottom of that. The water's cold, isn't it? Okay. Oh, neat. Put that in there. All right. Where's my net person? I oh. am. Okay, back up, bucket person. I all right, net person, help me pull this up pretty quickly here. And let's bring our bring our poles together. All right. Put on the ground, please. After two or three minutes of stream dancing, you, put, you pick you up the net up? with a forward okay. scooping okay. motion, fold it in half, and scoop the sample into a bucket. Oh, you white bucket. got a big bug. You think? What do we get? Look at, Look at that. Oh, you guys are so good. We netted some really nice bugs in this sample. We want to find out what they are. 
and get an estimate about how many are in there. Thanks. You might want to take this to land. Okay. Yeah, let's take it over to the land a bit, and we want to put a little water in there so our bugs can swim around so we can catch them. Our next task was to count, sort, and identify the insects. One of the ways bugs are classified feed. is by the way they feed. There are four types of feeders. Scrapers eat algae that they scrape off rocks. Shredders eat leaves that fall into the stream. Collectors trap and eat small particles of food carried in flowing water. Predators eat other insects and macroinvertebrates. After we had sorted the bugs, Kate told us a little more about them. This is a real special caddis fly. To get its food, it spins nets that are kind of like silk and it glues them on the rocks and it catches little particles of food that come down the stream and then it eats them off the nets. In fact, where's that rock I gave you a few minutes ago to hold for me? I'm going to show you something really incredible here. Sure enough, someone's at home. It's a net spinning caddis fly and it's again the immature, the larval stage that lives in the water and it lives in one of these nets that it spins. Look at this one. You see them sticking on the rocks? Mm -hmm. They spin these cases that are kind of they look like little log cabins, don't they? And right next to it, feel this. It's another kind of caddis fly case made out of rocks. On this rock, we have three different kinds of caddis flies. So this is an incredible little system in itself. And that's some pretty good, what we call diversity. There are lots of different kinds of caddis fly, not just one. Now what else have we found so far? We found a stone fly. Stone fly, what do they look like? They've got Two tails. Okay. Uh, this is stonefly. Later in the day, we went to a laboratory stonefly to practice identifying tails. bugs and to use There's a water one. quality assessment Make form. Have three We're, uh, we've collected a lot of really interesting uh, invertebrates from the stream, and what we next have to do is sort out what we found, and we have to identify what they are, and we have to count the different kinds that we have. So let's get looking at what we found. Using magnifiers and a simple bug key, we were able to figure out what our bugs were and what kinds of feeders they were. Does he have legs or do, does he not have legs? I think so. Yep, he has legs. Okay, so we need to go to number two. Does he have two tails and sometimes hairy gills in the yeah. neck and chest regions? Yes. He does? Okay, so then he is a stonefly larva. Stoneflies were easy. They have two antenna, two tails, and they are smooth on the sides. Stoneflies are shredders, which eat leaves, or predators, which feed on insects or other macroinvertebrates. He's darkly colored, so yes. that means he's a shredder. Mayflies look a little like stoneflies. They have two antenna and either two or three tails, but they have gills on their sides. Mayflies are either scrapers or collectors. Okay, does it have legs or doesn't it have legs? Yeah, it has three. I got two. Oh. Caddis flies are the ones that make cases out of rocks or sticks. Without their cases, you can see that they have six hooked legs on their upper body and two hooks at their back end. They have fluffy gill tufts on their bellies. Caddis flies can be scrapers, collectors, shredders, or predators. The case is made of leaves, wood, or twigs, or rocks, or sand grains. Leaves. Okay, that's called it's a shredder. Okay, so that's a caddisfly larvae made of woods and leaves and twigs. So we got to mark this one right here, okay? Does the mayfly, stonefly, and caddisfly are all sensitive to pollution. Their presence suggests good quality water. Some insects can tolerate somewhat lower quality of water like cranefly larvae and dragonfly larvae. Some insects, like the midgefly larva, are tolerant of pollution and can be found in any quality of water. It's small, up to one-fourth of an inch long, with a dark head and segmented body like a worm, and two tiny legs on each side. Another example is the blackfly larva. It's also small, up to one-fourth of an inch. One end of its body is wider, and it has a black head and a section pad at one end. 
If you find mostly organisms that are tolerant of pollution, it suggests poor water quality. Does he have long We worked our way through identification, counting, and sorting the bugs. Finally, Kate showed us how to work with a water quality assessment form, which told us whether Blackjack Creek was healthy or not. We've come back from Blackjack Creek, and we've identified the different types of macroinvertebrates. We've also counted how many different kinds we've had. We've transferred all this data to our water quality diagnosis sheet. Looking at our data is going to give us a key as to what some of those problems might be um, in our streams, whether it's a lack of oxygen for our organisms, whether it's increased stream flow that's causing a problem, or whether it's an organic or a toxic pollutant. We saw lots of different invertebrates in Blackjack Creek, caddisflies, mayflies, stoneflies, snails, beetle larvae, um, crane fly larvae, and we saw a lot of what are known as intolerant macroinvertebrates, uh, invertebrates that are really intolerant to different types of pollution. Well, looking at the data on the different kinds of vertebrates that we found and the numbers of invertebrates we found, we put all these numbers on our water quality diagnosis sheet for Blackjack Creek, and we came up with a rating of 25. And anything greater than 22 shows that the creek is in pretty excellent condition. And it looks like Blackjack Creek has some pretty excellent water quality. Well, that was our day. Later on, we talked with Mr. Watson, who owns the property, and told him that he has a healthy stream. That made him happy. We've all decided to become stream watchers and help monitor our streams. Our group did a kick net survey on another creek and found it had a water quality rating of only eight. So we organized a stream cleanup because a lot of people are careless about where they throw things away. We also began talking to people living along the stream to get them to help us clean it up. It was really fun learning how to do the Kignet survey. And now we can really help protect our streams. I hope you enjoyed learning about stream bugs, and I hope you'll become a stream watcher and help us protect our water. Have fun! Ha, ha, ha.